Well, we get calls from a lot of you out there who have lost your job or you're worried about your job or you simply don't like your job or your career. So today we're joined by career expert, one of my best friends, Dan Miller. Dan's the author of a wonderful book called No More Mondays. And he's always got really great tips on figuring out new sources of income, redirecting your career, kind of really and truly thinking outside the box. Well, you say thinking outside the box, but you really do that. Welcome sure. back. Good to have you again. Thanks, man. It's good to have you here. Okay. There are um, a lot of people that have a lot of talent that are on the street right now. They legitimately, they were in a big corporation. Mm -hmm. They were in a, and it's mainly the big corporations that have done the laying off, mainly. Uh, and, and so somebody's been somewhere 20 years, 15 years, they get laid off. The first emotion that they hit, even though it's legitimate economic times that created the layoff, is, is there's an anger and a bitterness, isn't there? Absolutely. And that's a knee-jerk reaction. But anytime I talk to somebody, you know, and as a career coach, I'm hearing lots of stories, as you are. Anytime I talk to them and they are dealing with depression, discouragement, frustration, anger, resentment, I know they're looking at what's already happened. I mean, it may sound trite, but if we draw that proverbial line in the sand and get a clear sense of what they're moving to, those negative emotions start to go away. So you got to get past just looking at what already happened and pointing fingers and blaming. What are you going to move to? What is it that you can offer? Yes, people who are reliable, dependable, offer a lot of value, are getting laid off through no fault of their own. But the question then is, okay, now what are you going to go to? Yeah, they let me down, I'm all mad at them, and you spend all your energy on that, on what has happened, instead of on what is going to happen. Absolutely. Now, give me some practical steps, because your first book's 48 Days to the Work You Love. I'm, I'm a corporate employee, I was a mid-level manager, uh, or whatever, making forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year, and uh, I was there 15 years, uh, and yeah, I've, I'm kind of mad that I got laid off. I'm kind of, my feelings are hurt. I'm a little bit bitter. Uh, what are some practical steps? Because the first book's 48 Days to the Work You Love. How do I get a job? And I'm not one of these guys that calls the Dave Ramsey show and goes, Dave, I've been out of work for seven months. How do I not be one of those? Yeah, don't be one of those. Again, if you go past 48 days, something's probably not working well for you in your job search. But be very clear about what it is that you have to offer. So the first thing is to be introspective. What are your unique skills and abilities? What are your personality tendencies? I mean, how do you relate to other people? What are recurring values, dreams, and passions? Get a clear focus. That may not be just a duplication of what you've most recently done. It may be a great opportunity to kind of wake up some dreams that you've had and redirect. And now's the time to do that. And you can do that. You can be in the driver's seat. Nobody has to be victimized just by what you hear the offers are or where they're hiring. So I get, get my unique clear. I get my unique set of skills. Then what do I do? Then you from that, then you create a resume if in fact you want to look for a traditional job. Create a resume. Identify 30 to 40 target companies. Don't wait to see who's hiring. If you hear who's hiring, you've already lost your window of opportunity. Identify 30 to 40 companies. You contact them and that process continues to get people offers out of what we call the hidden job market because there's a whole lot of opportunities that are not going to be on monster.com, not going to be in your local newspaper, but they're opportunities nonetheless. Make sure that you have in your target company though a range of companies so it's not just you know General Motors and IBM and Microsoft. There's are having tough times. Identify small companies that may have five to ten employees and you'll find great opportunities hidden there. Because you can go in and show that if you if you'll bring me in, I can bring more in for you than I cost you. Absolutely. And you can get to that entrepreneur, and he or she will make that decision for you. You've got to be able to convey why you have value. Nobody's waiting to give you a job. Nobody owes you a job. Nobody's going to take care of it. But you have to be able to convey why do you bring value. How do you how do you separate yourself from the sea of other people that came uh, in and applied for this job? You know, last month there were 589 thousand jobs lost. In the last quarter of last year there were 509. So that's a big jump and that's a frightening statistic. But you know, back just after the Great Depression there was a little book came out written by Dale Carnegie, one that you're, you and I are very familiar with, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It was a major success because he showed people how they could make themselves a great candidate even when there were a lot of other players out there. And it had to do with human engineering, personality things, rather than an additional degree, license, or certification. And those had to do with simple things. They sound almost too simple, but you can really make yourself an attractive candidate. Never criticize, condemn, or complain. Remember that another person's name is important. Show sincere appreciation. Smile. And you know, it's amazing 
even today, how quickly you can make yourself an attractive candidate in a sea of candidates who may have the same qualifications and credentials that you have, simply make yourself a more attractive candidate where somebody says, yeah, I want you on our team. And those are the kind of people that are finding opportunities when everybody else is seeing doom and gloom. Now, I'm also getting the calls from the former auto worker. I had a guy that they get laid off from IBM. He got a 70,000 severance. Auto worker gets 140,000 severance, those kinds of things. And they're saying, gosh, for the first time in my life, I'm thinking about starting a business. How do you decide what to do? Do you start a business in this environment? Absolutely. It's never been easier. And really, it doesn't take a lot of capital. A lot of people, and I'm getting a lot of emails from people saying, well, I'd love to start a business, but I can't qualify for a loan. I don't have $300,000. You don't need that. I mean, Entrepreneur Magazine tells us 69% of all new businesses being started require less than $10,000. 26% require zero in capital. I ran into a little gal the other day. I was in San Francisco. And I was eating, and she came up there. She had she was walking dogs, and I started talking to her. She walks dogs. She had six of them with her. She gets ten dollars for a thirty-minute walk, but she does six at a time, and she does it three times a day. Now she has a lot of free time during the day. But you do the math on that. That's nine hundred dollars a week walking dogs. I mean, you'd be surprised the opportunities to just provide a delivery service for elderly people to the grocery store, to doctor's appointments, walking the dog cleaning windows. I worked with a lady one time, she was in a desperate situation, and actually had her go and purchase a bucket and a squeegee. And she went up and down the road at one of the major thoroughfares here, washing business windows, and could effectively make fifty, sixty dollars an hour doing that. But just, you know, getting up and doing something. Absolutely. Just sitting at home and watching Oprah reruns is not a plan. It, it ought to come from something that you already enjoy. The best seed of a business idea is something you already care about, something you already know about, something you're passionate about. But don't be quick to dismiss it because it's not practical or realistic, because chances are you really can turn it into a viable business. You know, it, it's amazing the little things that people do that, that they have as a hobby and then they turn that into a business. I know you've counseled several people that have done that. I've got a tree in our front yard that was damaged in a storm and ended up, make a long story short, had a lady come out and she carved two beautiful faces in there. It looks like Moses and Abraham, about three feet tall, one on either side. We've now had pictures taken of that and she's gotten a lot of work because of that. But carving a tree, now that's not something you're gonna have your guidance counselor in college tell you how to grow up to do, <laughs> but it's a realistic business opportunity and she does extremely well. I have out on our property, and you're familiar with our property, but I have somewhere between 100 and 120 truckloads of wood chips that have been dumped out there. I simply befriended a couple tree companies and they think it's a favor and instead of them having to drive way out into the country, they dump it on my property and I'm now doing trails and all kinds of unique areas on our property. But the funny thing is, I have people asking me, gee, Dan, you know, how'd you get so lucky? Gee, Dan, can I buy some of your wood chips? Well, I could turn that into a business if I was looking for a business idea, and it's something just sitting there. It's somebody else's trash. Sometimes the best business ideas are just opening your eyes and seeing unique things that are all around us. Cool. Well, there's no reason to not have hope out there. No. This is an exciting time. I mean, a lot of times, challenges or unexpected, unwelcome things are kind of an opportunity to wake up, wake up something that's been birthed in us. You know, the status quo can be an effective eliminator of real dreams and real success. You know, good is the enemy of the great. And the things that are happening right now, I'm seeing a whole lot of people that are having an opportunity to wake up something that's going to take them to a, a much better level of success than they've ever experienced before. But a bunch of eagles pushed out of the nest and they've spread their wings and go. some of them are catching an updraft. They are. It's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Dan, thanks for being here, man. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Always a pleasure. Dan Miller, thanks. Good stuff. The book is No More Mondays.